So welcome back again and uh, today joined by Colin Higgins. Uh, nice to have you back with us Colin. Thanks Mike, I'm surprised and honoured to be invited back so I'm uh, looking forward to running through some uh, some new news. Well the re main reason you're back is you didn't pay for your tea and biscuits when you were here last <laughs> time. So, so anyway, no, uh, today we're going to take a look at Guyana and Suriname. Out here, drill ships are the kings, and this is going to be uh, part one of a two-part episode. Now, we made a list and we've compiled nine drill ships and three semi-submersibles are actually operating here in what is one of the world's global hotspots. So, Colin, you remember our uh, previous video, which you were the star of, and it was looking at the drilling rigs of Namibia. Well, I think the rigs themselves were the star, and uh, I was just the one that was able to communicate it. But yes, thank you. For anybody who wants to see that video, and you'll find our channel, and you'll see the videos. We've got about, oh, nearly 140 videos out there right now. Now, 2,000 views to date. We've had geoscientists, every type of engineer. We've got managing directors and chief executive officers. We have many, many instances of people watching us in the supply chain just to find out information. We have the companies themselves, the, the majors, the national oil companies, the mid caps, small caps, indies, consultants, academics, all sorts, and it's from right around the world. So, um, Colin, these are the rigs that we have compiled for, in this case, just Guyana. Yeah, it's an impressive list, and we see it's predominantly drill ships that seem best suited to the, in some cases, extreme deep water. We're going to talk about that a little later. Likely to be because the autonomous nature of drill ships, ship-shaped vessels have a much higher variable deck load and you can take everything that you need with you. It's certainly soaked up the global supply of current technology drill ships. Yeah, I mean, the supply side, it is improving, I think. You know, there's shore base in Burbese. I think it's developing, but you're right. Um, you know, for now, I think a lot of these rigs have got to be supplied for you know, a long time ahead to, to work, as you say, autonomously. And we'll talk about it more, but the contracts seem to be long. They're, they're essentially five-year term contracts, which is uh, very exciting for the dr drilling industry. It's exactly what the drilling contractors thrive upon. Absolutely. Yeah, so here's uh, Suriname. Yes, we've got a similar mix of drill ships and semi-subs. They're not the same semi-subs that we saw, well, they're not the same class of semi-sub that we saw in Namibia, which were the very high spec, latest 6th and 7th gen semi-submersibles. We're not quite seeing that yet in Suriname. They're slightly older semi-submersibles. But fit for purpose. Absolutely, yeah. And here is a quick look at them. Anything uh, we can say just as an introduction on these uh, photos? Only it's that we see the predominance of the ship-shaped vessels for the reasons that we talked about earlier. Yeah, that's um, that's. We'll come on to e each of these in some more detail. Now, there's 12 rigs there. So, how much do these rigs cost? I mean, to actually build one of these drill ships or one of these semi-submersibles. Well, the rigs that you, we saw on the previous slide would have cost between 600 million and. 850 million US dollars in build cost, just to give an idea of the amount of uh, capital tied up in this inventory. And that would be for the drill ships and would the uh, the semi-subs, are they similar? or The, the semi-subs would be generally at the higher end of that same range. So, okay. Yeah. Well, and then in terms of uh, the day rate, um, I mean, I think we talked to that uh, on the previous video, but uh, we're talking about 400 thousand yeah. dollars a day yes i don't think there'd be much below in that fleet that would be below 300 or three hundred and fifty thousand a day and the high, the high end the more recent placements might be above four hundred thousand so pause the video if you want to have a look at uh, at any of these rigs um, we've kind of taken the material from the nobles uh, website here for each and every one of the rigs that are operating in the guyana Suriname. Also for Stena, again, if you'd like to pause to get information, and here's the Transocean rigs. But how different things were a few years ago. So I was over in Tenerife back in February 2017. 
This was the site. These are all individual rigs. In fact, I thought that was two together. Is that right? Uh, no, I think it's two rigs, two drill ships parked side by side. I beg your pardon. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not that's, a dual. That's what not a dual derrick. Whereas this one is looks like a. That's a dual derrick. That's what we call a, a ram rig. That uh, that configuration of derrick. Okay. Cool. And then uh, at that same time, you know, this was a really bad period for the industry because, you know, here was another couple of rigs here. So dual derrick, what's the advantage of having two derricks? It allows parallel activities and it's particularly useful when you're constructing the top hole section. So you can be running casing or hanging off the casing in the water column with one derrick, one drill centre whilst you're uh, drilling the hole with the other drill centre and you can actually just move the rig across and run the casing in a in a wanna straight from the water column. So there's lots of lots of, of advantages to uh, to dual derrick in terms of time efficiency. Wow. Okay. Now while I was on Tenerife and this gives me an opportunity to share some of my holiday snaps very, very quickly, but Mount Tidy is the highest mountain in Spain. Everybody knows where Spain is, but the highest mountain, well it's actually down here on the island of Tenerife. It's a great place to go for geologists. There's a hundred percent rock exposure and amazing volcanoes to study. The fantastic scenery and great geology up there. And there it is, the peak of Mount Tidy. Anyway, let's get back to offshore rigs. So let's have a quick look at water depth. This is a fascinating graph which shows water depth in metres in the left-hand axis and time in years across the top. It's beginning in 1975. You'll see there's that cloud of dots up at the top of the graph, which is land wells and predominantly in Trinidad and in the jack-up water depth. And it's not really until the late 90s and early early 2000s that we, we have those two outliers you'll see which are circled in red and these were from the ocean drilling project. Interesting in a sense but the construction for the ocean drilling project wells was very different from an oil and gas well because we weren't drilling prospects, we weren't drilling potential hydrocarbon bearing structures so generally there were no BOPs run. Essentially you drill the well and coring almost from the seabed so Fascinating and incredible water depth for the time. Now we're down to almost 3,000 metres water depth back in the early 2000s, but it's not completely relevant to the oil and gas exploration appraisal development technology that we've used. These were sort of scientific research, weren't they? And generally, having got down to the seabed, they'd only go a few hundred metres kind of at best, I, I think. It's not yeah, right. yeah. Now some of them were a little deeper, but yeah, they weren't trying to explore or exploit any uh, hydrocarbon reserves. Okay. And then there was uh, Zadeus over in uh, French Guiana? Yes, this was, again, very early well, and I understand it was encouraging, but it hasn't been developed. There's been no development drilling on at this point. Yeah. And then we get into this cloud of wells, and here's a Lisa here, which was one of the first to be discovered, and of course, one of the first to actually achieve uh, production. And that's around about 1,700 metres by the looks of it. And then we've got wells, uh, the Ranger discovery down here, and here the Jamilo One well, that's down almost to 3,000 metres. Now, this is our take on it. We've taken the names off because they kind of clutter things up, but uh, you can see our definition from within our trove databases of shallow, deep and ultra deep water. And of course, the majority of the wells or the recent wells here, ignoring the, the outliers we've spoken about, the ODP and the Zadeus well. And so really, it was sort of round about uh, 2015. Yes, that's when the, the step, the big step was taken to deep water exploration and development for this region. And uh, even in very recent times here, we can see that this is by year. So I think this will be 2022 or 2023 here. You can see uh, we're getting anything between, you know, sort of 800 metres water depth down to just shy of 2,000 metres. And there's more wells to come throughout the year. But now we're seeing in Guyana in particular, we're seeing a lot more appraisal wells and indeed development drilling to actually get the uh, fields on production. The Jodie's Resolution was a vessel I was lucky enough to visit once when it was in Australian waters. It had been the Sedco 471, one of the older DP drill ships that was renamed as the Jodie's Resolution for the scientific drilling project. So funded by research bodies and governments to go around the globe just 
drilling different continental margins out into the deep water ocean. But at some stage it came across to Guyana, Suriname, and I think it was drilling in and around the Demerara platform and various deep water areas. But uh, yeah, I mean, is that still operational, do you think, or is that? I don't think so. No, I think the ocean drilling project is uh, in abeyance. Yeah. And probably that rig uh, well, may well have gone to the uh, the scrap. Well, I, I remember working on a sister rig, the uh, Sedco 472, as it was then, was back in 1980. It was the first time. So, so wow. these are, that was pretty well news, built at the same time. This one was 78. So, yeah, the technology. You couldn't really convert it back for oil and gas drilling operations. Okay. So if you're interested, please consider sponsoring us. You can advertise on the channel, or if you'd like a video of your uh, assets and or products, if you're doing a farm out, uh, if you want to publicize, uh, then Trove News, it's a great place to go. There's our contact details, get in touch. Now, what have we kind of learned today then in our quick look at the rigs of Suriname and Guyana? Well, Guyana and Suriname are certainly, as you said, one of the great exploration hotspots uh, really, since 2015, it was the commencement and probably more success between that and present day than any other basin around the world. So what appear to be commercially successful exploration wells and planned developments and the commencement of the development of drilling as well. Demand for rigs in the area is high. It seems to have soaked up all the excess deep water drilling inventory. The drill ship market is particularly strong now after eight years of being in very much the doldrums. It is well suited to drill ships, has the perfect ideal deep water, met ocean conditions are well suited to drill ships. Yeah, and if people would like more videos on drilling and drilling rigs, um, well, you must watch part two because that's gonna give a lot more information on one specific rig. But um, the other way, stay on top of all the exploration and production developments Get in touch and you must subscribe to our Trove Guyana Suriname database. So that's part one. Join us again for part two. Colin will be back with uh, in, in future videos to, to kind of get into the more technical aspects of drilling. So if there's anything you want to know, leave a comment down below. Well, again, thank you ever so much. And uh, we'll be back. Uh, watch the uh, Keep on watching the channel. Lots more videos on... Lots of exciting new things coming along, so um, watch this space. Bye for now. Very good, thank you.